Okay, thank you. Yeah, let me get this out here just a little bit further. Thank you. And then I'll try and act alert and, uh, you know, high life condition. Okay, hi everybody and welcome back. And we're going to go ahead and read President Ikeda's uh, lecture now on the Go Show, The Treatment of Illness. Mm. And uh, the lecture itself starts with many of the things that we read last week. We read the whole Go Show last week, so you've already, we've already read all that. Uh, and that's the gray boxes at the beginning. We won't start there. We'll start where it says lecture on page 102. And uh, I could use a little coffee throughout this whole presentation. So if you see me stop and take a drink, please accommodate me. All right, here we go. Now, first of all, this is all a setup. The beginning is a setup by President Nikita to qualify where he comes from in saying the things that he says. And you're gonna find, where does he get all his material? Where? No? Well, of course, that's from the ghost show. That's the source origin. But, but who, who qualified it to him in a way that he's now qualifying it to us? Right. President Toda. Mm. President Toda. That's the reason why this, this mentor-disciple relationship is, again, one about you having a relationship with someone else that inspires your life. That's the only way it's really that. Okay, mm -hmm. if they're just somebody that you think knows more and so you're just listening, you know, you, the passion, they, they light the passion in your life. They qualify and clarify your mind so that your mind can perceive the truth. Okay, so be aware that he's going to, this is the beginning here, he's going to basically say, this is the spirit in which you should read this. Okay, mm -hmm. so as he qualifies that, that's why I'm saying all this in advance. When he says that, please try and apply yourself in that way. Always whenever he qualifies anything like that. See, there, there's nothing throwaway in what Daisaku Ikeda says. Nothing's, uh, he just said it to sound good or as an, you know, an embellishment for the sake of leaving an impression. No, it's, it's really to, again, try to be your mentor and give you the inside edge to understand what it is you really should be pondering. Because when we read the Go Show, are we supposed to just read it? No, we're supposed to read it and then chant about it and chant to understand it and chant to incorporate its lessons in our lives. We're disciples of the dude that wrote those letters that we're reading now, okay? Mm -hmm. That means that he is our leader mm -hmm. and we are doing our best to emulate him and what he's promising in his teaching is only possible by what? Following his teaching. It's not available anywhere else. You don't follow his teaching, you will not get what he's talking about. Guaranteed. Mm -hmm. There's no other point of access, okay? So do understand, it doesn't exist anywhere else. Mm -hmm. All right, so, and that's what President Makaguchi understood, and that's what he passed on that's why he was so crazy about doing shakabuku even though nobody listened to him it was everybody was poor it was you know a bad situation at that point in time but let me let me just start the lecture he says lecture on page 102 whenever my mentor second soka gakai president jose toda reminisced about his mentor you know reminisced right remembered, started talking about memories of, okay? Reminisced about his mentor, Tanesaburo Makaguchi. He spoke of him with great respect and deep nostalgia. What would he mean by deep nostalgia? He misses him. He misses having him there with him, okay? That's, nostalgia is to have a, a, a desire for past experiences to still be present. Mm. Right? You, you miss them. Mm. Whenever he related how Mr. Makaguchi was arrested and died in prison for his beliefs, he wept tears of grief and burned with righteous anger. So President uh, Toda was never really ever able to talk about President Makaguchi without feeling pissed off. Mm. Mm. But righteous anger, 10th world anger, do you understand? Mm. So people that try to tell you you can never feel anger if you're the Buddha are just completely full of shit. 
and don't have any idea what that concept is really all about. Mm -hmm. Okay, because the tenth world exists in all other nine. Mm. So there is no separation from the tenth world, even if you're in hell. That's the point. Mm. All right. In his novel, also titled The Human Revolution, Mr. Toda vividly depicted Mr. Makaguchi. So this is how he describes him in his human revolution, mm. Toda's human revolution. The first half of the novel tells how Mr. Toda's alter ego, Gan, work, or, or Gan, worked at a printing company and living in a small room in a row house encounters Mr. Makaguchi and through the power of the mystic law improves his situation and helps his neighbors do the same. What is that telling you right there? <laughs> this, this whole thing, every paragraph is going to tell you something. I'm going to be asking a lot of questions. Did President Tota start from a, a, a position of affluence and power? Mm. Huh? No. Did Mr. Makaguchi start from a position of affluence and power? Most people criticize the Soka Gakkai right, today because of his affluence and power. They're saying it has too much power and it's too rich. Okay, and you, where did you get all that money? Boy, how would you say to those people to get them to give you all that money? Mostly it's very wise real estate investments. But uh, do you understand what he's saying there? He says, the first half of the novel tells how Mr. Toda's alter ego, Mr. Toda working at a small printing company, working at a company, living in a small room in a row house, that's not top flight accommodations, okay? It gives you an idea of what his socioeconomic position was when he first met Mr. Makaguchi, right? And then he glommed onto him and got into what he was saying about this nam yoho rengekyo and this Nichiren Daishonin, okay? And so, and through the power of the mystic law, mm -hmm. improves his situation. Now, what's that really referring to? Actual proof. You're Getting right. benefits, yeah. right. The proof of actual fact. He improves his situation by practicing a daily practice under Mr. Makaguchi. And... The only way for that to be powerful and effective, though, is if you're doing it not only for yourself, but also for others. Yeah. So that's what President Kata has wrapped all that up into that one little paragraph describing President, Mac uh, President Toda. Okay? Continuing on uh, the second column. In composing the novel, the image of Mr. Makaguchi pressing onward taking the lead in introducing people to Nichiren Buddhism in even the poorest back streets and reaching out to families in all kinds of circumstances. Why would he be doing that? Well, he talks about the poorest back street, even in the poorest back streets, and they're reaching out to families in all kinds of circumstances. What is that qualifying? These people were in need. These people needed something that could help them. President Makaguchi understood and perceived that Nam Yoho Rengekyo was exactly such a thing. Mm. And then he sought out those people that are in need. Generally, that's, they're considered the lower part of society, right? Yes. Nobody's really going out to try to help them yes. overtly without expecting anything in, in, in return. Right. You know, there is no Soka Gakkai yet where they're trying to build a big organism. This is in the very infancy of things. So the idea here is to qualify what is the correct original spirit of your faith? Mm. And then how do you sustain it throughout your life? Because it'll certainly get become common. You'll think you know things you don't know very easily. You'll think you'll have all kinds of experience. You've been to so many meetings. You've been chanting for so many years. And then you wonder, why haven't everything that I've been aspiring for occurred? It's all spelled. That's why, that's why we read this. This tells us what we really have to do if we want those aspirations to come to fruition. Otherwise, it's happy talk. Right. Okay? Remi okay. In composing the novel, the image of Mr. Makaguchi pressing onward, taking the lead in introducing people to Nichiren Buddhism in even the poorest back streets and reaching out to families in all kinds of circumstances remained ever present in Mr. Toda's mind. He understood that that was the key to the activity that they had been doing in terms of propagation. It was the willingness to share other people's suffering and to encourage them that there was a way to become victorious in their life, even in the midst of all the darkness mm -hmm. that, that surrounded them at that time. 
He wasn't scared of sick people. He wasn't scared of poor people. He wasn't scared of misfits and, and cast-offs. Do you understand? Right. That is how we started as an organization. All right? One can clearly sense his earnest wish that readers would come to understand the essence of human revolution so that they could lead lives of hope. President Toda, in writing The Human Revolution, his President Cato also has a novel called The Human Revolution, right? Mm -hmm. He remained ever in present. These, these experiences with President Toda or President Makaguchi remained ever present, and he would come to understand the essence of human revolution. These are very, these sentences are filled with key words. He's saying now that this compassion that I just qualified and helped describe more clearly is the essence of Nietzsche and Buddhism. This compassion to see and understand that there is no separation between you and anybody else. And as long as they have suffering, you do too. That's just a fact. That's why Kosa and Rufu is so important. That's the point in time. That's the formula for changing the karma of the whole by having the karma of less than the whole actually transform. Okay? So, could li so that they could live lives of hope, meaning they're not buried in the shit that keeps them down and keeps them oppressed and keeps them from rising. The novel depicts the starting point of the Soka path of mentor and disciple. It chronicles how Gan takes Mr. Makaguchi as his mentor, becomes the general director of the Soka Kyoiku Kyo Kai, uh, pardon me, the Soka Kyoiku Gakai, forerunner of the Soka Gakai, and joins Mr. Makaguchi in resisting, in resisting opposition by Japan's militaristic government during World War II. So what did he also qualify there? As regards to social justice, they weren't afraid to take on the freaking government. When they could see that the government was doing things that didn't square with the wisdom that was being derived from their practice, from the Gosho, they then remonstrated against it. Do you have the courage to do that? There may come a time. Do you have the courage to do that? There may come a time. Take a look at today and understand what tomorrow is probably going to be like. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Uh, resisting oppression by Japan's militaristic government during World War II. Militaristic. That's a matter of definition. The flame of justice on July 3rd, 1957, in the midst of the tumult of the Osaka incident, which we talked about last week when it was mentioned in the go with President Ikeda, in the background, that's again when President Keita got busted for, for some charges that were not true. First time he went to jail. He says, on July 3rd, 1957, in the midst of the tumult of the Osaka incident, I flew from Hokkaido to, uh, Mr., uh, to Osaka to appear for questioning by the police. Mr. Toda met me at Haneda Airport in Tokyo where I had to change planes. There he handed me a copy of his newly published novel, Human Revolution. I read it avidly on my flight to Osaka. The passages that were based on his time in prison overflowed with his fighting spirit. They ignited in my own heart a bright flame of justice and determination to strive alongside my mentor to lead people to happiness. No matter how harsh the adversity, President Kate is now saying to you, we can always find a way to make it into an opportunity for our human revolution. We can always use it to create value. That is the essence of Nietzsche and Buddhism. And how is it that that is the case? What is it? No matter how harsh the adversity, we can always find, that sounds like a pretty absolute. Mm -hmm. So there would have to be an absolute aspect or element to that comment for you to be able to perceive it correctly. What is that absolute? What can you absolutely do every time you are faced with harsh adversity? How do you turn it into an opportunity for human revolution? What is human revolution? What's he saying there? 
Let me read it again. Mm -hmm. No matter how bad devils screw with you, mm -hmm. we can always find a way to turn it into an opportunity to attain enlightenment in our present form. Mm -hmm. Okay? We can always use it to create value by never giving up, mm -hmm. right. by always being the living example. That is something each one of you can do regardless of what you know. This is a matter of life condition, condition and conviction. You with me? Yeah. Nietzsche and Buddhism is a teaching of hope that allows us to powerfully and positively transform reality. Transform reality. So do understand, when you chanted for those benefits, it wasn't like they were going to happen anyhow. You transform reality. When you create the reality, there's a million different potentials that can happen prior to the potential that's that single moment of life. Mm -hmm. That's why, because cause and effect are simultaneous, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no effect that you've already made a cause for in all this. Do you follow? Mm -hmm. This is in a single moment of life, turning poison into medicine. Mm -hmm. All right? Nietzsche and Buddhism is a teaching of hope that allows us to powerfully and positively transform reality, change poison into medicine. Not pretend that it's medicine and it's still poison. Change it from one thing. That's transformation. Yeah. Our Soka People's Movement helped those who were suffering in the misery of post-war Japan in a society that had turned its back on people's welfare. The Soka Gakkai helped people stand up based on faith in the Gohonzon and demonstrate, this is the whole key, we have to demonstrate. They demonstrated is what he's saying. Help those people demonstrate. So you and I have to be demonstrators as well. There's no pass, okay? And help demonstrate the boundless, transformative power of the mystic law. We will become someone that's not the same as the person we were when we started. You couldn't be if you're gonna become the Buddha in your present form. It's easy. You will not be who you were when you started. All right? <clears throat> the writing I will discuss in this chapter is the treatment of illness, a letter addressing the serious epidemics. Think of COVID again, man. We're right in the midst of all the same shit right now. Yeah. The writing I will discuss in this chapter is the treatment of illness, a letter addressing the serious epidemics affecting people throughout the country and what constitutes the fundamental means to free people from suffering. This letter brims with the Daishona's profound compassion and determined spirit to relieve the suffering of all humanity, he embodies his powerful wish to communicate the essence of Buddhist philosophy so that people can lead lives of absolute victory. And what's the essence of Buddhist philosophy? Buddha wisdom and the compassion that manifested it. Don't forget, compassion is what manifests wisdom. When you go out and do that shakabuku, even though you don't know everything about the Gosha, you don't know everything about the Daishonas teachings, when you lead people to start that discovery path themselves, that's what that was. That was the discovery. You have discovered, you're communicating the essence of Buddhist philosophy. Because if they don't do shakabuku just like you did to them, they're not going to get out of it what you said that they could. They have to understand from the beginning this is all about Kos and Rufu. This isn't just about your bag of tricks, all right? Okay, so, uh, pardon me. Thank you. Uh, the letter brims with it. I shown his profound compassion, determined spirit to relieve the sufferings of all the suffering of all humanity. With that, though, the, what I wanted the other point that I wanted to make is that um, even though this focuses on the serious epidemic aspect. A serious epidemic, because we read the Gosho already, what would a serious epidemic be? It would be an illness of the body, right? This is where he's going to qualify the difference between what illness. Illness is also illness of the mind. It's delusion is also a type of an illness. It can be eradicated. It can be cured. It can become healthy. Do you understand? Okay, so... Curing the illnesses arising from the three poisons. That's where they come from, okay? That's what creates the karma to experience those symptoms. From the Go Show, your letter says that the ep epidemics are raging all the more fiercely. 
The illnesses of human beings may be divided into two general categories, the first of which is illness of the body. Physical diseases compound, comprise 101 disorders of the earth element, 101 imbalances of the water element, 101 disturbances of the fire element, and 101 disharmonies of the wind element, a total of 404 maladies. These illnesses do not require a Buddha to cure them. Skilled physicians such as water holder and water carrier Jivaka and Pian Chue prescribe medicines that never fail to heal physical sickness. The second category is illness of the mind. These illnesses arise from the three poisons and are of the 84,000 different kinds. They are beyond the healing powers of the two deities and the three aesthetics of Brahmanism or the, uh, or the six non-Buddhist teachers. Medicines uh, described by Shen Nung and Huang Ti are even less effective. Illnesses, illnesses of the mind differ greatly in severity. Continuing on page 104, first column. Illnesses of the mind differ greatly in severity. The Daishonin composed this letter in response to the news he had received from his follower, Toki Jonin, that epidemics were raging more fiercely than ever. It is believed today to have been written on June 26, 1278. The epidemics from 1277 through 1278 were very severe. In another of his writings, the Daishonin records, in five families out of 10, in 50 households out of 100, all the members have died from disease. So he's saying half the people have been wiped out. Mm -hmm. Others have escaped illness, but are suffering from great spiritual distress, mm -hmm. and thus are in even greater agony than, the, than those who are ill. Even the people who managed to survive have lost the children who used to follow them as closely as shadows or the spouses from which they had been as inseparable as a pair of eyes or the parents upon whom they had relied as they would upon heaven and earth. For them, what meaning does life hold? How could sensible people not abhor this world? The Buddha taught that there is no safety in the threefold world, but the current state of affairs seems excessively tragic. Now that's from another Gosho. That was written by the Daishonin. And what is he saying there? It's completely understandable to not be able to figure out what I'm saying because the world's not reflecting anything that can fix everything. My nam yo ho ring geikyo, I'm saying is a teaching that can change poison into medicine. I'm not seeing medicine, uh, poison changed into medicine anywhere else. I'm distraught. I'm without hope. Mm -hmm. I'm without path, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm discouraged. My life condition then is not gonna be in a place necessarily where I immediately am able to perceive what you're talking about, mm -hmm. okay? So he says, Epidemics, President Kata continues, epidemics of this scale must have resulted in the illness and death of many of the Daishonin's followers and their family members. Right. Okay, so not, you know, he's, ass he's assuming people that had practicing members, mm -hmm. had family members that became ill. We know that this occurs, right. yes. that they passed on. Yes. We know that this occurs. There is not a magic wand that you start chanting and no one dies and there's never any tragedy for you to have to deal with in your life, right. okay? That would leave no teachers for that kind of struggle if none of us had to overcome it. So he says, looking back at history, that I shown in his lifetime was beset by continuous onslaughts of the three cam calamities and seven disasters including earthquakes, unseasonable weather, famine, epidemics, and strange occurrences in the heavens. The people were weighed down by suffering and anxiety, okay? So when we have all kinds of weird shit like, we're getting ready to go into a worldwide famine. Does everybody know that? Do you guys know that? Are you aware of that? The 2023 will probably see food shortages that revolt, result in starvation. Literally human beings dying of hunger. Are you aware of that? Okay, you should be aware of that. The world is really changing. 
it is literally deglobalizing. And so there's going to be an adjustment period, all right? And that adjustment period right now is predicated on the fact that the breadbasket of the world is at war. Russia and Ukraine basically supply a lot of the grain. Once we started globalizing, we, we quit growing all of the stuff locally. We started allowing for specialization in different areas and they become imports and they become staple imports. Okay, so this fact that we don't have enough grains to make enough bread to feed everybody on earth is a fact right now. Mm -hmm. It hasn't maybe played out to the point that you're saving all kinds of super skinny people that have died or are dying of starvation. But in the next few years, you need to adjust your mind to the reality of where we're headed. That is where we're headed. Okay, so the world needs Kos and Rufu now, not later. Mm -hmm. is what I'm trying why I'm trying to convey what I'm trying to convey it's a very serious time in the world's history right now there's a specific reason why you have manifest right now why you're sitting at this table listening to me talk like this and not rolling your eyes and say who do that guy think he is I'm just trying to tell you what the words say okay mm -hmm. you have to decide what your behavior is going to be mm -hmm. all right in discussing the epidemics, once again, sweeping through the land, the Daishonin says that there are two general categories of illness, those of the body and those of the mind. It goes on to describe the ways of healing each. The first category of illness, this is the middle of the uh, second column, page 104. The first category of illness, illness of the body or physical illness is caused, he says, by disturbances of the elements of earth, water, fire, and wind. The four elements comprising the body, because they're physiological, right? Mm -hmm. He states, uh, pardon me, according to ancient Chinese tradition, such illness, he states, can be cured by a skilled physician. The second category of illness mentioned is illness of the mind. These illnesses are different from what we categorize today as mental or psychological illnesses, referring instead to pathologies of the inner being. Pathologies, do you know what that means? What's a pathology? Anybody know? Okay, it, it, a pathology would be something that can kill you. Okay. Something, that, something that's function is uh, to do damage to your your being, your your physicality, a pathology, you know, cancer is a pathology. Okay, there's a billion different pathologies, all right? Okay. All right. <clears throat> or what we might call mistaken ways of life dominated by diluted impulses and earthly desires. So let me read this again. These illnesses are different from what we categorize today as mental or psychological illnesses, okay? Mm -hmm. Referring instead to pathologies of the inner being, okay? so or what we might call mistaken ways of life dominated by deluded impulses and earthly desires. Mm. So what would he be talking about? What kind of a pathology is he talking about there then? Karmic self-inflicted shit. I'm an alcoholic, okay? That has repercussions on your life if you're an alcoholic. Let me tell you, you will find that out at some point in time. Mm -hmm. And it'll either kill you or you'll figure it out and stop. Mm -hmm. There are all kinds of pathologies, okay? that can lead your mind into the three poisons, lead yourself, you in the wrong direction to a positive, constructive outcome. Instead, it leads to a destructive yeah. outcome. And suffering leads to suffering, okay? Mm -hmm. Rather than suffering leading to happiness. They're two different things. He says, these in turn, okay, diluted impulses and earthly desires. That's stuff like shit I wanna do that I shouldn't be doing. You understand what he's talking about, right? I don't have to delineate them. There's many. Mm. There's a million of them. All right. These, in turn, this kind of uh, disrespect of our own lives, because that's exactly what that is. Mm. These, in turn, lead to distortions of the times in society. You get a bunch of people that are screwed up that way, and all of a sudden, society's reflecting that. Okay. So diverse and varied are these impulses. Though he's saying, you couldn't, I couldn't give him you a list. So diverse and varied are these impulses that we all have. Everybody has different ones. Mm. They're karmic, which are rooted in the three poisons of greed, anger, and foolishness, which is a reflection of karmic past, 
right? Mm. That, that they are said to number 84,000, all right? It's not 10, top 10 or anything like that. Unlike illness of the body, illness of the mind arises from the darkness or ignorance at the core of our being and can only be cured by Buddhism with its profound insight into life. Such illness cannot be healed by the most gifted physician or the most miraculous drug. Further, the Daishonin says, when seeking a cure based on the teachings of Buddhism, we must first recognize that illnesses of the mind very, uh, differ greatly in severity. So what did that just say? Unlike illnesses of the body, arise, uh, illnesses of the mind arises from the darkness or ignorance at the core of our being. What would that be? He just gave a word away that tells you what it is. <clears throat> darkness or ignorance at the core of our being, our fundamental darkness. The original state, the aspect of the original state that is fundamental darkness that never goes away even in the lives of enlightened beings. Okay, Buddhists still have, you never get rid of the, the that. You never get rid of the in, entirety of the original state because that's what allows you to manifest in the first place. All right, he says, can only be cured by Buddhism, why? But, yes, but 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 why Eastern and Sansan? Um Because it's a means to bring forth the life of Buddha that already exists in your in your life that would be completely obscured at this point. So no amount of learning or hearing somebody or doing mental exercises or whatever way you thought you might be able to cure this kind of poison can only be cured by chanting nam yoho renge kyo is what he's actually saying there. Because that allows you to, the simultaneity of cause and effect, transform your karma, right? Okay, so we don't have to live it out. We can transform it. <clears throat> Such illnesses cannot be healed by the most gifted physician or the most miraculous drug, only by chanting. Further, the Daishonin says, when seeking a cure based on the teachings of Buddhism, we must first recognize the illness of the mind differ greatly in severity. Now, why is he making that point? Because there could be times when, I mean, some people may have things that are more easy to overcome in terms of the severity of, the, their, of, of their obstacle of the mind mm -hmm. than others. So you can't look at each person and say, here's a cookie cutter recipe for how you resolve this. Because some people are going to have downright damn funky karma. And some people are going to be right on the edge of going, oh, I get it. Mm -hmm. All right. There's a difference. And we all know there are those that are going, oh, I get it. And those are ever. All right. So a philosophy for creating a flourishing society. In a lecture he once gave on the treatment of illness that Mr. Toda said that each word and phrase of this letter represents the Daishonin's true intent. Each word and phrase. As such, he said, we should read it with a vast state, with a life state as vast and expansive as the sky. What was President Toda encouraging us then in saying that? What's he mean by that? As such, we should, okay, because, because each word and phrase of this letter represents the Daishonin's true intent, this is the correct teaching being laid out very clearly is what that just said, okay? Because that is the case, how should we read it? How should we embrace it? Read it with a life state as vast and, as, and expansive as the sky. What is that saying? Read it as the Buddha, the Daishonin has already qualified you are right now. You're the one that's keeping you from being that Buddha if you're not, that, if you're not in a state of Buddhahood. Mm -hmm. It ain't because the information doesn't exist. It's that you still don't believe you are. Mm -hmm. It's not until you finally realize that even with all your warts and, 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 and scars, that those are the things that allow you to be the Buddha in your present form. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, so 
don't ever read this as though you're some underling and this is over your head. Not a word of this is something that you can't perceive and understand deeply if you desire to. All right? Because you got to chant Daimoku to bring forth that vast, that state as vast as, and expansive as the sky. If you're not practicing correctly, you're not going to experience the state of Buddhahood, a life state of Buddhahood, or even the seeking spirit of a, of a cause awakened one, for God's sake. All right? And while referring to the dauntless spirit with which the Daishonin rose into action for the people's happiness, he emphasized that a truly outstanding philosophy was needed to help society develop. When adopting a philosophy, it is self-defeating to follow any other than the best philosophy, Mr. Toda said. So he said, if you're going to put effort and action into play with your life, you should do it on the basis of the correct teaching which is nam myoho renge And how do we know that? It's already been clarified by the eternal Buddha. Nietzsche manifested to make that clarification for us so that we wouldn't have to worry about finding it ourselves. Mr. Tota said, can the people flourish by following an inferior philosophy? No, we must follow the supreme philosophy. That's what the Daishonin tells us. That's why he says you must chant nam myoho renge You can't just read the Lotus Sutra even now. The people can flourish only if they follow the supreme philosophy. And the supreme philosophy is Nietzsche Buddhism, the Buddhism of sowing. Mm. All right? That's his message. Buddhism of sowing is the only thing that's going to do it. In any age, a society flourishes or declines based on its guiding philosophy. Mr. Toda also declared that we were born into this world to propagate this supreme philosophy. I'll say it again. Mr. Toda also declared that we were born into this world to propagate this supreme philosophy. What does that say? What did President tell Toda, what was, what was he declaring then, if that's the case? You're all bodhisattvas of the earth. You don't have to do anything to become bodhisattvas of the earth. You already are. Now will you fulfill your mission? Will you live up to the challenge that you promised that you would? Mm -hmm. He would doubtlessly have been overjoyed to observe our deeply committed struggle as we take action to positively transform society in accord, in accord with that mission. Uh, page 105, an age where truth and error are confused. That's what makes this all so difficult. Further, from the Gosho, further, the Lotus Sutra is divided into two distinct categories, the theoretical teaching and the essential teaching. One is as different from the other as fire is from water or heaven from earth. One who confuses the essential teaching with the theoretical teaching would not have the sense to distinguish fire from water. The Buddha drew a distinct line between the two in his preaching, but during the more than 2,000 years since his passing, no one in the three countries of India, China, and Japan, or for that matter, in the entire land of Jampadvipa, the entire world, has clearly understood the difference. Only Tiantai in China and Dingyo in Japan generally differentiated between the two. And the per precept and the precept of the perfect and immediate enlightenment in which the essential teaching is dis distinguished from the theoretical still remain to be clarified. In the final analysis, Tiantai and Dingyo perceived it in their hearts but did not reveal it for three reasons. First, the proper time had not yet come. Second, the people had no capacity to accept it. And third, neither had been entrusted with the mission of propagating it. It is today in the latter day of the law that the bodhisattvas of the earth will appear and propagate it. Okay, so then what is he talking about based on that last sentence when he says it will be the bodhisattvas of the earth who will appear and propagate it when he's talking about theoretical and essential? What is he talking about? He's talking about the Lotus Sutra and the Buddhism sowing. He's talking about the Buddhism of harvest for the former in the middle day and the Buddhism of sowing for the 10,000 years of Mapo, the latter day and beyond. You with me? Yeah. Okay, so it's only, he's not, when he says essential, again, we, we talked about this last week. Don't think he's talking about the second 14 chapters because we always talk about the first 14 and the second 14. I, last week I said 16 and 16 because I misspoke. The bottom line is that always remember that when he's speaking of essential teaching and we're talking about latter day of the law, there is only one. Mm. Nam myoho renge period. Mm. 
all right? While the Lotus Sutra in the uh, first full paragraph on page 106, first column, while the Lotus Sutra is the supreme teaching for curing the illnesses of the mind, there is a clear difference as distinct as the difference between fire and water between the theoretical teaching and the first half of the Lotus Sutra and the essential teaching of the second half. In distinguishing the theoretical teaching from the essential teaching, the Daishonin here cites three aspects, the status of Shakyamuni, the mission of his disciples, and the interpretation of the Buddha land. Only the great teachers Tentai and Dingyo of the middle day of the law correctly apprehended the difference between the theoretical teaching and essential teaching. Mm. But conditions in their time were not right, and so they did not explicitly proclaim the difference. Now in the latter day, the bodhisattvas of the earth have emerged. Mm. Okay? And the bodhisattvas of the earth are whose disciples? They're the disciples of the original teacher, okay? And what is the original teaching? It could only be nam myoho renge because it's, it's, it's the most consolidated basis. It's not like something that's been extrapolated, okay? Now in the latter day, the bodhisattvas of the earth have emerged. That's why we're talking about essential as nam myoho renge and not the second 16, 14 chapters. Mm. They are qualified they are qualified. They are qualified to propagate the great law of the essential teaching and the time has come for them to spread it, says the Daishonin. Mm -hmm. So what did he just say there about the Bodhisattvas of the earth? We are qualified. Yeah. We are qualified and who wasn't? Tintai and Dingyo. We're more qualified than they are. Yeah. We yeah. are bodhisattvas of the earth. They may have been aware, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And they may have fulfilled a function that was absolutely essential in, in, in nature, yes. but they didn't lead people to nam myo ho kyo the way for their illnesses to be instantaneously overcome without going through the process of emancipation through gradual learning of all the 10 steps and the 10 steps and the 10 steps. Don't forget, this all starts with Tintai breaking it all down and that ends up with the Makashikan, okay? Great concentration and insight, which is the actual uh, 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 contemplative meditative process for attaining Buddhahood in your present form for the former middle day. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that <clears throat> in distinguishing the theory, pardon me, where am I? Uh, not paragraph. Huh? Here we understand the not paragraph. Okay, yeah, thank you. Here he underscores the deep significance of the essential teaching and the appearance of those whose mission it is to propagate its doctrines. Okay. The two elements make it possible to lead the suffering people of this intensely evil age to enlightenment, which is the wish of Shakyamuni and all Buddhas. Of course, all Buddhas wish for us to fulfill our missions as Bodhisattvas of the earth. But our teacher is the original teacher. So he's saying here, here he underscores the deep significance of the essential teaching, nam myoho renge -kyo, and the appearance of those whose mission it is to propagate its doctrines the bodhisattvas of the earth. That separates it from anything that has to do with, tenth, uh, with Shakyamuni in reality. Do you understand? We're all on the same team. We all want universal enlightenment, but some of us have different gigs and some of us have a different age to manifest in. These two elements make it possible to lead the suffering people of this intensely age, evil age to enlightenment, which is the wish of Shakyamuni and all Buddhas. No other teaching no Shakyamuni teaching allows that, which is, pardon me, that these two elements, the essential teaching, only could be nam myoho renge -kyo. the appearance of those whose mission it is to propagate his doctrines could only be the bodhisattvas of the earth. He says these two things are what make it possible mm. for, you, for the suffering people to be led to enlightenment in the, in the evil latter age, which is the wish of all Buddhas. Okay, we're not abandoning Shakyamuni. We're superseding Shakyamuni. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Buddhahood's Buddhahood's Buddhahood. Yeah. I can't, I'm not taking away his Buddhahood, but that was then, this is now. Yeah. Now is the only time when this teaching can be made available because there's only now did the, are the teachers 
manifesting that are capable of presenting it so that it can be understood and embraced. You're with me, right? Yeah. But the Buddha's wish, he says, this is the wish of Shakyamuni and all the Buddhas, but the Buddha's plural wish is still that, uh, plural and possessive, but the Buddha's wish is still not yet realized. And confusion reigns throughout the realm, warns the Daishonin, because everyone is still attached to the pre-Lotus Sutra teachings and the Lotus Sutra's theoretical teaching, which is the whole Lotus Sutra in the latter age. Right? Do you understand? We, we, we already covered this, right? Okay. He reprimands the religious world back then by saying, and believe the rulers, and, and because the rulers of Japan of previous ages believed in these sutras and erected temples and donated fields and farmland to the schools, pardon me, they espoused the, the religious schools, not educational schools. If the followers of these teachings today were to admit the truth of my assertions that their teachers are, teachings are inferior, they would have no way to justify themselves and would, in, con, uh, in consequence, lose the support of the ruler. For this reason, they become enraged, slander the sutra of the true teaching, and doing harm to its votary. So you understand what he said there, right? Why is, all, why is this resistance occurring? Why are people not being willing to grasp the teaching that he's ready and trying to elaborate? or understand the correct teachings that have already been presented by from, from the sutras that Shakyamuni preached? Pardon? Because yeah, people still... Um... Because of what they have now. Because of what they have now, That's they deprive different. themselves of what they can have mm -hmm. if they get rid of the old clothes mm -hmm. and put on the new clothes. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. Because they're afraid to lose what they already have. They're not willing to risk anything toward Buddhahood. They don't even believe it's possible because the other sutras say it cannot be. Okay? They don't understand the Lotus Sutra's uh, 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 teaching. All right? They've never, those other schools don't get into the Lotus or the Nirvana Sutra, right? They stop well short of Mahavrachana Sutras, not even of the perfect teaching. Okay, so think about how many people are doing Amita, how many people are doing true word. Okay, those will never get you anywhere. All right, so he says, and so, so to not lose what they got, they won't give up what he's talking about. <clears throat> the ruler, he continues, then sides with the majority. And because it is difficult to abandon the teachings honored by the rulers of previous ages, or because he is ignorant, or because he despises the votary of Lotus Sutra, me, uh, uh, Nitrin, or because he believes the groundless accusations of others about me, Nitrin, he persecutes the votary of the Lotus Sutra, me, Nitrin. In other words, those who should be in a position to properly distinguish between true and false lack correct judgment and simply and simply blindly follow precedents or accede to the majority or believe lies and foolish hate and foolishly hate the people who, uh, pardon me and foolishly hate the person who is speaking and acting for the truth the society of the Daishonas day was one where truth and falsehood were turned upside down. Values were in turmoil and people lost sight of the principle of respect for life and the philosophy that enabled people to develop their full potential. So what's he talking about there? Their values were in turmoil and people lost sight of the principle of respect for life. That's the teaching of the Lotus Sutra, isn't it? The respect for life. Mm -hmm. and, and that then thereby is the philosophy that understanding that there's no separation between you and everybody else, to not blame anybody else other than yourself for what you experience as an individual, to perceive that all people are equal. Mm -hmm. There's no difference between races, genders, ethnicities. It doesn't matter, mm -hmm. okay? It's maybe ethnicities and, gen and races are the same, but anyway, you understand my point, right? Mm -hmm. He's saying, that's what enables people to develop their full potential. That's what allows their Buddhahood to, to appear. You can't have your head filled with 
detrimental thoughts towards others and be in a state of enlightenment. Right. All right. The Daishonin stood up as the votary of the Lotus Sutra to fundamentally transform, mm -hmm. change it from what it is to something that it is not mm -hmm. at this moment. To fundamentally transform such a warped and distorted society. In this letter, he teaches his followers that because society is so filled with confusion and suffering, they must persist in this struggle for truth and justice. Okay? And that's why we do what we do. We, regardless of the obstacles, we don't give in. We continue to try and create Kosen Roof through our efforts, through our faith. Yeah. Those who uphold the mystic law are eternal victors. This is from the Go Show. Good and evil are, are, have been inherent in life since time without beginning. According to the provisional teachings and the schools based on them, both good and evil remain in one's life through all the stages of the Bodhisattva practice up to the stage of near-perfect enlightenment. Hence, people at the stage of near-perfect near enlightenment or below have faults of some kind. But those at the highest stage, in contrast to the hard... Uh, pardon me, but not those at the highest stage people that attained Buddhahood, uh, supreme perfect enlightenment, didn't have evil in them anymore. In contrast, the heart of the Lotus Sutra is the doctrine of 3,000 realms in a single moment of life, which reveals that both good and evil are, are inherent, even in those at the highest stage of, imper of perfect enlightenment. And everybody understands that, right? All good and all evil are contained within the 3,000 realms. There is no exclusion then, all right? This fu the fundamental nature of enlightenment manifests itself as Brahma and Chakra, whereas the fundamental darkness manifests itself as the devil king of the sixth heaven. President Kata continues. He'll clarify this better than I would if I freelanced right now. In his section, the Daishonin turns to the question of why his followers, and not just those who slander, must suffer when the benevolent deities inflict punishment on the country as a whole. He acknowledges that this is a reasonable question, but adds that it reflects an awareness of only one side of the situation and not the other. By the other side, he's referring to the fact that evil demons who hate good people are everywhere in the country. Even should sincere practitioners die, in accidents or of illness, we should remember, President Ikeda encourages us, that they will definitely attain Buddhahood as a result of their steadfast faith. Not only the deceased who sincerely practice faith throughout their lives, but also those who chant nam myoho renge for them after their passing are certain to stay on the pathway to happiness that will endure eternally throughout the three existences of past, present, and future. The Daishonin was always deeply considerate of surviving relatives and sympathized with their grief. Referring to one deceased follower, he writes, when he was alive, he was a Buddha in life, and now he is a Buddha in death. He is a Buddha in both life and death. When enveloped in the, cha when enveloped in the chanting of nam myoho de uh, dedicated to realizing Kosen Rufu, Death is a departure toward eternal victory. Let me say that again. When enveloped in the chanting of nam myoho renge dedicated to realizing Kosen Rufu. So he's making a qualification there. Mm -hmm. Perceive that qualification because it's very important. I don't want you to think he made a false promise here. When enveloped in the chanting of nam myoho renge dedicated to realizing Kosen Rufu, dedicated to us fulfilling our mission as Bodhisattvas of the earth. Death, for us that have lived our lives that way, is a departure toward eternal victory because we will always re-manifest the state of Buddhahood in each subsequent life, period. The deceased is certain to rejoin the ranks of those striving for Kosarufu with a fresh, pure, revitalized life when they re-manifest as a temporary gathering of the five components one more time for the sake of the law, because that's why we manifest as temporary gatherings. That's why we go through the sufferings of the Sahe world, is our compassion. The profound principle of good and evil in life. 
the profound principle of good and evil in life. This passage describes, from the Go Show, this passage describes the true reality of life based on the principle of 3,000 realms in a single moment of life. Sutras other than the Lotus Sutra teach that to attain Buddhahood, one must eradicate all evil in one's life. But the Lotus Sutra teaches that both good and evil are inherent within our beings, within a single moment of life. Simultaneity of cause and effect includes everything. Mm -hmm. Even after achieving Buddhahood, that is, Anatara Samyak, samyak Sambodai, per, Supreme Perfect Enlightenment, that is perfect enlightenment, evil doesn't completely disappear. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you're looking at somebody that's, you know, you, you, you've attained Buddhahood, don't expect them to be perfect and without any fails, failings. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why it's ridiculous. <laughs> evil, you don't have to become Jesus. I'd love to always say that, but it's true. We don't have to do what most other religions say we must do, which is almost become perfect, all right? Mm -hmm. But the Lotus Sutra teaches that both good and evil are inherent even within, are, are inherent within our beings. Even after achieving Buddhahood, that is perfect enlightenment, evil doesn't completely disappear. The two aspects of good and evil remain inherent in one's life. They're both going to be there, period. The principle of 3,000 realms in a single moment of life teaches that both good and evil are contained within each single moment of one's life. That's what I said. It's all about a single moment of life. For a Buddha, however, the evil of the state of hell, inherent, inherent within a Buddhist being, does not generate negative workings, create negative karma, or cause suffering, according to the Lotus Sutra. Instead, a Buddha enfolds everything in the positive workings of compassion and wisdom and strives to lead both self and others toward happiness. In the same way, even beings in the state of hell have within them the supreme good of the world of Buddhahood. If not, I couldn't attain it, and probably you wouldn't be able to either. All right? It's just that they don't encounter good influences and conditions. In the same way, even beings in the state of hell have within them the supreme good of the world of Buddhahood. It's just that they don't encounter good friends, good influences and conditions. Do you understand? Rather, they are instead constantly coming into contact with negative influences and conditions. Bad friends, these activate their inherent evil, activate it because it's always there to be activated, mm. which in turn brings suffering to themselves and those in their environment because they don't separate from the environment. So they will have an impact on that environment and everybody that shares that environment will feel that suffering. Mm -hmm. Okay? As we both know. The function of goodness inherent in our lives is called the fundamental nature of enlightenment. The function of goodness inherent in our lives is called the fundamental nature of enlightenment. The fundamental nature of enlightenment is the same as the Buddha nature. Its name is Namyoho Renge Kyo. So when we're chanting Daimoku to the Gohonzon, we're calling forth the fundamental nature of goodness that exists in our life and has since the original state. Mm. Okay? Mm. Has since. Has always, because mm. the original state has no beginning or end. Right. All right? So when we chant Nam Yoho Renge Kyo to the Gohonzon, mm. the mirror of the actual 3,000 realms in a single moment of life, the Daishonin's life of the... 10 worlds all embodied, believing in our inner Buddha nature. Now, what does that mean? Faith. Faith. Faith in what? Faith in, God. in the teachings of Nichiren, because he's the one that's saying that we can do this by just chanting Nam Yoho Renge Kyo. So if you don't think it's there because you can't see it yet, because you haven't done the Nam Yoho Renge Kyo's to make it manifest, and you don't believe that you can get there, you're gonna impact your ability to get there. That's a cause, right? So he says, 
When we chant Nam Yo Ho Rengekyo to the Gohonzon, the mirror of the actual 3,000 realms in a single moment of life, not the theoretical one that's just derived from Shakyamuni and, 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 and Tantai, believing in our inner Buddha nature, the fundamental nature of enlightenment is our li in our lives is activated. Its light illuminates our bodies and minds, our relationship with ships with others, and our environment and we transform. In the latter day, most people are unaware of this wondrous law of life, the mystic law, or even if they have heard of it, they resist it or reject it. Ideas and philosophies are, are confused and people lose their powers to, of discernment and correct judgment. In an evil age, the function of fundamental evil within our innermost being, that is fundamental darkness, comes into contact with the evil influences and conditions that are everywhere and is activated. As that I shown in rites, the fundamental nature of enlightenment manifests itself as Brahma and Chakra, whereas the uh, fundamental darkness manifests itself as the devil king of the sixth heaven. With this whirlwind of evil ravaging the latter day, the attempts by the votary of the Lotus Sutra to expand the Buddhist forces for goodness come under increasing attack. Okay, so when he's talking about the attempts by the votary of Lotus Sutra to expand the Buddhist forces for goodness comes under increasing attack, what is he talking about? He's just talking about Nichiren? He's talking about, he's talking about, Shak, or talking about Daisaku Akeda? Is he talking about Soka Gakkai? What's he talking about? Any of us. Any of us. Any of us function in the way he's describing this paragraph. When he, what, he, what he says here is he's describing a disciple of Nichiren. All right, and if he, if you're a disciple of Nichiren, you're going to come under attack, more attack than you were before. Okay, because you're you're perfecting in a single lifetime what normally under most other tenets of Buddhism would take many. With this whirlwind of evil, so in other words, since it's all around everywhere, it's so easy to catch. It's so easy to catch the bug of evil. With this whirlwind of evil ravaging the latter day, think about now. The attempts by the votary of the Lotus Sutra, when I'm doing Shakyamuni, Shakabuku, and professing and teaching others that I shown in teaching mm. and trying to uh, get them to chant Nam Yoho Rengekyo, mm. I am actually a votary of the Lotus Sutra. And so are you. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so the attempts by the votary of the Lotus Sutra to expand the Buddha's forces for goodness come under increasing attack. The Daishonin notes that at such a time, the benevolent deities will punish evildoers and protect the good, while evil demons will harass the good and support evildoers. Continuing on page 109, a life of continual advance and value creation. Now, elsewhere, Nietzschean writes, ignorance and awakening are simply, let me just, yeah, that's what I thought. Ignorance and awakening are simply different names for this single mind. Do you understand what he's saying there? Since the fundamental nature of enlightenment, mm. innate goodness, and the fundamental nature of, of uh, 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 darkness, okay, mm. evil, yeah. okay, we, we both have we have both good and evil in here. Yeah. <clears throat> Ignorance and awakening are simply different names for the same single mind that contains them mm. both, right? Mm. He also states, enlightenment means enlightenment to the essential nature of phenomena and delusion, ignorance of it. What's he talking about there? Enlightenment means enlightenment to the essential nature of phenomena. So what do you, enlightenment means that you're enlightened to what? nam myo ho kyo As the basis of the original state, it's the, uh, it's the perfect teaching. It's the, te uh, it's the only teaching for the latter day of the law, right? Mm. And delusion, is not understanding that. It says ignorance of it. Right. But that means that you would not perceive it correctly. Mm -hmm. Ignorance doesn't mean you don't have the ability to perceive it correctly. It just means that you don't perceive it right. correctly. Right. Mm -hmm. In other words, human beings who oppose the mystic law and commit evil dudes, deeds do so because they cannot overcome the fundamental darkness in their lives. They just can't stop doing what creates unhappiness for themselves. Mm -hmm. It is also human beings who, that's why we have to do human revolution. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just change a few bad habits. It's actually change the core identity of who we are. 
It is also human beings who, by embracing faith in, and practicing in accord, in accord with the mystic law, manifest the fundamental nature of enlightenment and foster solidarity for the cause of good. The struggle against external evils is one and the same with the struggle to defeat evil within us and to manifest our inner goodness. By burning the firewood of ignorance and deluded impulses to light the fire of awakening and wisdom, we can illuminate the path to happiness for ourselves and others. By burning the firewood of ignorance and deluded impulses, how do we do that? How do we burn the firewood? Why, why are our problems the firewood of enlightenment that Aishana says, don't stress over having problems. That's what's going to get you to Buddhahood. How? Why? Chant. What causes you to chant? Because you're such a good person? Problems. Because you're such a Buddha? No. Problems. Difficulties. Challenges. It's very, very seldom is it altruism until <laughs> way down the road. Yes. Okay? Those first four of the six stages of practice are all about me, 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 me. Mm. Right? Mm. Okay. You make the transition to 10th world for reals. When it's no longer me, 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 me. You know, I don't know how, how many of you guys chant for this country. I do every day. I chant for you all every day. Okay? It's really what occupies your mind. Your identity as a bodhisattva of the earth and your desire to fulfill that function or the common mortal, God, I wish I was without any problems. Okay. <clears throat> uh where thank you by burning the firewood of ignorance and deluded impulses to light the fire of awakening and wisdom that's again doing human revolution we can illuminate by chanting nam myoho renge kyo we can illuminate the path to happiness for ourselves and others we light our own path there's not so no G, there's no supernatural figure that's going to come down daisaku kate is not going there's no light coming from anywhere but us okay yes this is the process of changing our karma and carrying out our human revolution. This is transformation. Mm -hmm. When we find ourselves up against a thick wall of suffering <laughs> and feel like we can't go on, holy shit, I know how that feels. <laughs> That's the time to rouse the underlying power in our beings through chanting nam myoho renge kyo But what? What is the only thing that will allow you to do it at that moment? Because you don't have the life condition or the goddamn wisdom to know that. Faith. Period. Faith. I'll never give up. That's all you have to know. That's all you have to do. Period. It isn't that hard. Just have the, have the integrity to do what you say you're going to do. If you make the vow to never give up, then never give up. Let death take you. Okay, then it's on Nietzsche and it's on whoever else has fed you all this. It's on me. Okay, it won't be on you. Right. <clears throat> Can't go on. It's time to rouse uh, underlying power in our beings through chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. As Nietzsche and Daishonin writes, only by defeating a powerful enemy, mm. the devilish function of our own mind, yes. can one prove one's real strength. Mm. That's why we have the Gohonzon and our Buddhist faith and practice. As the Daishonin says, the single word belief mm. is the sharp sword with which one confronts and overcomes fundamental darkness or ignorance. That's why in our Buddhist practice and our efforts for Kosen Rufu, there is never an end, mm. never a point where we can say to ourselves, this is enough. We must constantly renew and rejuvenate ourselves, continually grow. Mm. <clears throat> We advance forever. God, I don't know if I can keep saying this without crying. That is why our Buddhist practice, so thank you. All right. That is why, you don't have to give it to me in a neat little pile. Thank you. That is why, uh, I need it now. Hang on. Okay. We advance forever, joyfully and powerfully engaging in the great drama of value creation, transforming our lives from one dominated by ignorance to one shining with bright awakening or enlightenment. That's why in our Buddhist practice and our efforts, I'm saying it again, 
That's why in our Buddhist practice, the middle of page 109, second column, in our Buddhist practice and our efforts for Kosen Rufu, there is never an end, never a point where we can say to ourselves, this is enough. We must constantly renew and rejuvenate ourselves, continually mm. grow. Mm. We advance forever, joyfully and powerfully engaging in the great drama of value creation, yes. of being the Buddha, mm. transforming our lives from one dominated by ignorance, being a common mortal, to one shining with bright awakening or enlightenment, becoming the Buddha in our present form. Mr. Toda said, if the entire human race could, race could manifest the life state of Buddhahood, that is, character, of the highest quality, and that's how he's qualifying what Buddhahood is, character of the highest quality. There would be no war or hunger mm. in our world. There would be no illness or poverty. Elevating the entire human race to the state of Buddhahood, to, the, to character of the highest quality, this is carrying out, our, out the work of the thus come one. Mm. And again, this kind of character only comes from within. It's yes. not taught to you. It's from revealing your original state. Yes. That's the point. You're not learning how to do things correctly. You're revealing the fact that uh, you're, the reality that has been covered up with delusion, dirt, grime, whatever you want to call it, slander. All right. You're unslandering your perfect life. Yes. All right. That is the character of the highest quality. There would be no war. Da, 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 da. Okay. This is uh, carrying out the work of the thus come one. To achieve this, we need to expand the goodness in inherent in life as broadly as possible through our prayers and our actions. actions. Our greatest mission as SGI members is to create value for all humankind, to live as examples for them. Demonstrating that this is the, this teaching is supreme. I don't care. I'm going over and I know because you guys aren't going to have to come back next week. Demonstrating that this teaching is supreme. The three calamities and seven disasters of these past 30 years or more, however, are due solely to the fact that the entire country of Japan hates me, Nichiren. In province after province, district after district, and village after village, everyone from the ruler on down to the common people seethes in anger against me as such the world has never seen. This is for the first time, this is for the first time that the, pardon me, this is the first time that the fundamental darkness has erupted in the lives of ordinary people caught in the illusions of thought and desire. Even if they pray to the gods, the Buddha or the Lotus Sutra, these calamities will only be aggravated. But it is different when the votary of Lotus Sutra offers prayers to the essential teaching of the Lotus Sutra. In the final analysis, unless we succeed in demonstrating that this teaching is supreme, these disasters will continue unabated. And it, we talked about this last week. He's talking, unless we show actual proof. All right? Because even the Lotus Sutra, he's disqualifying it right here. He's saying, only if everybody chants Nam Myoho Rengeko. So he's saying, only if we as the Bodhisattvas of the earth validate this teaching of Nam Myoho Rengeko to others so that they also embrace it. And it is likewise spread amongst the people. All right. Here the Daishonin says that the three calamities and seven disasters that have been afflicting Japan for the more than 30 years since he publicly proclaimed his teaching were due to the entire country's hostility toward him. He notes everyone from the ruler on down to the common people sees in anger against me such as the world has never seen. As such, he says, the only way to bring an end to these, those calamities and disasters is through prayers based on faith in the great law of nam myoho Rengekyo on prayers based on the uh, uh, is prayers through prayers based on faith in the great law of nam myoho Rengekyo. he also says this is the first time that the fundamental darkness has erupted in the lives of ordinary people caught in the illusions of thought and desire in general the fundamental darkness is the last form of illusion that arises after a bodhisattva seeking to attain buddhahood has eradicated the illusions of thought and desire the illusions innumerable as particles of dust and sand after calling forth and overcoming of the fundamental darkness, a bodhisattva attains Buddhahood. So he's saying here, after calling forth and overcoming. So we're calling forth that goddamn fundamental darkness so we can kick its ass, so we can uh, 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 express our original state. 
after calling forth and overcoming the fundamental darkness, a bodhisattva attains Buddhahood. Here the Daishonin is saying that it is unprecedented for the fundamental darkness to arise in the lives of ordinary people who are not even seeking Buddhahood. That's the whole point because that's what brings it forth. Mm -hmm. it, okay? Those, pardon me, who have not yet eradicated the illusions of thought and desire. They haven't made their way up the, up, up the food chain yet. They're not shocking many people. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're now on the latter day of the law. That's why I say this is the first time that common mortals have all uh, had this happen to them because it's the first time that an ability for a common mortal to become a Buddha in a single lifetime has ever existed because my teaching didn't exist prior to now because it wasn't time for this teaching to be prior to now because I still need my Bodhisattva bros to do the thing after I leave the teaching for them. It's going to happen in the future, not while I'm here. Mm -hmm. But it'll be done in my lifetime that I shown and says, okay? And the illusions innumerable as uh, dust, particles, dust and sand. I have that three stars. I think you understood what I said. This means that the Daishonin's teaching is one that enables ordinary mortals to fundamentally transform mm -hmm. their lives, forget their past lives. This life is all that matters because what you do in this life is what's gonna create the eternity of your next. Each, each achieving Buddhahood directly rather than going through the progressive stages of eradicating different types of illusion. All this 10 stages of 10 stages and 10 stages that are in the uh, Makashikan. It is the teaching of attaining Buddhahood in one's present form. In other words, in Nietzsche and Buddhism, instead of gradually overcoming the illusions of thought and desire, we, it can immediately con conquer fundamental darkness, the most fundamental illusion. This is like people who are accustomed to darkness suddenly being exposed to sunlight. They can't open their eyes because it is too bright. Similarly, at a time when everyone believes the enlightenment of an ordinary person to be impossible, and that's the biggest problem, if you don't believe you can do it, you're not going to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And the only reason you can believe you can do it is because the Daishonin says that you can. Mm. And if you have faith in his teaching, then you should be believing that you can, yes. right? He says, similarly, at a time when everyone believes the enlightenment of an ordinary person to be impossible, a teaching that says people can attain Buddhahood in their present form will be the most difficult to believe and difficult to understand. Teaching, it's, a, it's, it's impossible to perceive it on the first take. Hence the Japanese people's resistance. Their fundamental darkness manifested as anger and resentment toward Nichiren. But if the consequence of their negative actions causes them to awaken to the correct teaching, then their fundamental enlightenment will manifest and they will be able to attain Buddhahood in their present form. So even evil people can attain Buddhahood in their present form because they transform. Mm. They no mm. longer can maintain and, and, and continue to be evil people. All right. This represents a transformation of life at the most profound level. I didn't know that was the next sentence because I've got this thing here, but that's what I'm talking about. You're no longer an evil person. Okay. So it doesn't matter if you start out as an evil person. If you didn't, if some of us didn't start out as evil people, how would we be able to say with conviction, you can see, you can do this. Yeah. You can do this. Yes. You're not worse than me. Right. Okay. So, <clears throat> All right. As SGI members, we chant Nam Yoho Rengekyo, the essence of Lotus Sutra, and carry on the spirit of actions, uh, the spirit and actions of Nietzsche and Daishonin to enable all people to attain enlightenment. We courageously share Nietzsche and Buddhism, a teaching of the highest good, and we show brilliant and, sh and we are showing brilliant actual proof of the greatness of this teaching through our efforts for Kosen Rufu. In his copy of Nichiren's writings, Mr. Makaguchi underlined the passage, in the final analysis, unless we succeed in demonstrating that this teaching is supreme, these disasters will continue unabated. Succeed in demonstrating that this teaching is supreme in this context means establishing the truth and establishing truth and justice in society, in the real world. Let me say it again. Succeeding in demonstrating that this teaching is supreme in this context means establishing truth and justice in society in the real world. Mm -hmm. So what did that just say? Succeed in demonstrating that this teaching is supreme in this context means establishing truth and justice in society in the real world. What is that? 
Exactly. It's coast and Rufu. This, this succeed in demonstrating that this teaching is supreme. Is it like I get so many benefits? You guys look at me. Okay. I, ha, 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 I'm the proof. No, each person has to be the proof. All right. And if each person becomes proof, then we have attained the level where we're in Kos and Rufu, right? <clears throat> so it is a struggle of words. It is one through courage. It is one through actual proof. <laughs> Only then can we manifest our fundament, fundamental nature of enlightenment and overcome calamities and disasters. And he's saying that. He's saying you got to manifest actual proof or it's all happy talk. Mm -hmm. It's theoretical. Mm -hmm. You can't qualify that you're into the actual. Right. The key to transforming reality, I and mean, this would be a good one to figure out. No, it wouldn't. Mm -hmm. 111, and we're almost done. Mm -hmm. There are two ways of perceiving the 3,000 realms in a single moment of life. One is theoretical and the other actual. What Tintai and Dingyo practiced was theoretical, but what I practice now is actual because what I practice is superior. The difficulties attending it are that much greater. Only makes sense. Mm -hmm. The doctrine of Tintai and Dingyo was 3,000 realms in a single moment of life of the theoretical teaching, while mine is that of the essential teaching. And these two are as different as heaven is from earth. Tentai set forth a meditative practice aimed at perceiving that the principle of 3,000 realms in a single moment of life is inherent in the lives of all living beings. Mm -hmm. In latter ages, however, few actually practice this meditation, and those able to attain enlightenment as a result were even fewer. It was not a practical access, it was not a practice accessible to all people. In his great concentration and insight, the Makashi Khan, Tentai states, as practice progresses and understanding grows, the three obstacles and four devils emerge in confusing form, vying with one another to interfere. In the meditative practice, he set forth, however, the three obstacles and four devils arose in the practitioner's mind. Also, in terms of the time, it was not yet the latter day of the law, so there was no rampant slander of the Lotus Sutra, and only rare occurrences of life-threatening difficulties or persecution on a national scale. By contrast, in the Daishonin's case, the three obstacles and four devils arose with a ferocity far exceeding that encountered by Tintai, Dingyo, and others who practiced the Lotus Sutra in past ages. Moreover, they arose in the form of persecutions and difficulties in the real world. The Daishonin writes that the three obstacles and the four devils that assail him are even more powerful than the three obstacles and four devils that Tintai and Dingyo and others had to face. Ours are identical to the Daishonin's, by the way, just so you know. He didn't have bigger ones just because he's the Daishonin. This is the Bodhisattvas of the earth reality. This is the, 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 the truth of the uh, uh, attaining Buddhahood in your present form reality. The Daishonin's practice of 3,000 realms and a single moment of life took place in the midst of real life society in the confused and turbulent age of the latter day. Who else does? Ours, okay? There's no separation between us and Nichiren. He took action as the forerunner of the Bodhisattvas of the earth. He was the example of all of those who assume the same identity. We become not the uh, Namyoho Rengekyo, thus come once. All right? We're all Namyoho Rengekyo, thus come once. He took action as the forerunner of the Bodhisattvas of the earth who in the Lotus Sutra had been entrusted with propagating the mystic law in the evil latter age after the Buddha's passing. In the course of his practice, he waged a heroic and unrelenting struggle against the three obstacles and four devils that appear as actual human beings and social forces. The Daishonin writes, because what I practice is superior, the difficulties attending it are that much greater. The Daishonin's practice expresses his compassionate wish to help all people in the latter day attain enlightenment. As a result, it is a struggle against grave error in the real world, which is why the, pursuit, uh, the persecutions aroused by it are so much greater than those encountered by Tentai and others. We could perhaps draw a parallel in terms of our Buddhist practice. The theoretical 3,000 realms in a single moment of life corresponds to establishing in theory the possibility of personal transformation. In contrast, the actual 3,000 realms in a single moment of life corresponds to carrying out our human revolution in actual practice in the real world so that we and others can walk together 
uh, can together walk a path leading to happiness and positively transform society as a whole. In other words, it means practicing in the, uh, in the great work of the Buddha, namely Kosen Rufu, and following the example of the Daishonin, the votary of the Lotus Sutra and the leader of Kosen Rufu. The last section, middle of page 112, from the daily, from the daily activities of each individual. In May 1953, Mr. Toda issued guidelines for the women's division. This came about after Mr. Toda heard a chapter women's uh, leader from Tokyo share her determination at a meeting. He asked if she would kindly give him permission to use her remarks. He thus, uh, presented, he, he thus presented them as the guidelines for the women's division, prefacing them with his introduction, which said in part, this completely agrees with the hopes I have long held for the women's division. Among the guidelines were the following words. We need to be women with whom others feel at ease to say anything. Women who are always ready to listen to others and women who are always ready to help others. Until now, women have been regarded as being jealous and slanderous in nature. Let us make today the moment when the Soka Gakkai's women's division members put an end to this assumption. <laughs> Go girls! The guidelines for the women's division brimmed with a sense of mission that the success, by the way, I noticed that there's no men's division equivalent to this, where a men's division came and said something that was so inspiring that Tota put it down in writing. Ha! Yes or no? I don't know of any. He's always talking about women. The Go Show's always to half of it's to women. Women are equal to men in yeah. every way and probably superior in many. This is a fact, guys. Yeah. The guidelines for the women's division, and I'm not putting us down, real, <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. They don't have the goddamn garbage baggage we're born karmically with. We got the devil of the sixth heaven between our legs, man. <laughs> The guidelines for the women's division brim with a sense of mission that the success of Kosa Rufu rested in the hands of women. And it, uh, I sure believe that. I, I've watched and come to my own conclusions on that. They were filled with a powerful resolve to be the linchpin of unity, surely. Mm -hmm. They were filled with the powerful resolve to be the linchpin of unity in our movement continually sharing Nietzsche and Buddhism with others. They're the ones that have done Kosen Rufu. Mm -hmm. They challenged themselves in Buddhist study in order to realize their own inner transformation while not retreating a step from their daily struggles, including raising children and caring for elderly parents. Mm -hmm. With the deepest respect, Mr. Toda affirmed and proclaimed these words of conviction and commitment spoken by this chapter woman's leader. Uh, 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 writing. These words embodied the spirit of Soka Gakkai President Jose Toda. On another occasion, referring to the newspaper the Soka Gakkai would soon publish, Mr. Toda said he would have to contribute a serialized novel to it. He then began to compose his novel, The Human Revolution, motivi motivated by the wish that each member would, truly, uh, would study it to learn about the Soka Gakkai spirit. At the same time, Mr. Toto was deeply aware that the essence of human revolution pulses vibrantly in the lives of the ordinary men and women of the Soka Gakkai who were striving for Kosarufu while dealing with many issues of daily life. There is no storehouse of treasures more precious than our lives. We have the power to create value in every situation. Our Buddhist faith and practice power this value creation. As SGI members who uphold the sound philosophy of Nietzsche and Buddhism and teaching of respect for the dignity of life, let us continue to illuminate the hearts of our precious friends with the light of courage and hope. Let us make fearless efforts to create value in the form of peace, friendship, and happiness in our communities and societies. Thank you so much. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.